Good morning, Mount Calvary. We're back at it again. Welcome to our Facebook Live worship service this morning. I'm super pumped. I'm super happy to be here. Today is a day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We have an awesome service lined up today. Our praise team is about to rock the house. Pastor Dennis is going to deliver just another amazing message. And we're just going to be able to fellowship in the comments. So I want everybody to stop what you're doing right now and just comment, say good morning, say hi, fellowship with one another, and then go ahead and hit the share button so that way more people can be reached and more people can come into this fun fellowship worship time that we're going to have with each other and with God this morning. Before we jump into service, I just want to give you a reminder on the ways that you can give tithes, offerings, or a gift to the church. You can give by mail by sending a check or money order to P.O. Box 1354, Akron, Ohio 44309. You can go online to our website at mcbcministries.com. You can text to give by texting any amount to 330-303-2117. Or if you'd like to use Cash App, you can send us a Cash App by using our cash tag, dollar sign MCBC Akron. Once again, thank you for joining us this morning. I'm about to hand it over to the praise team. I hope everybody enjoys service today. And remember, make sure you're writing stuff down in the comments. Good morning, Mount Calvary. We come to declare and to lift up and praise his name once a day. We want you to know and understand that there is nobody, there is no one like our God. So come, lift your hands right there on your sofa this morning and praise the Lord with us.
one that compares to our God. There is no one that is greater than him. No one that is better than him. Where are, wherever you are, in your home, in your car, wherever you are right now, can you just lift your hands? Can we just begin to give God glory? Because he is the great I am. There is no one that compares to our Lord, to our Savior, our Master, our Healer, our Redeemer, my everything. He is my way maker. He is a door opener. He is a heart fixer. He is my mind regulator. God is everything to me. Your name is strength. Your name is strength. Your name is strength. 
Sometimes discouraged, but not defeated, cast down but not destroyed. There are times I don't understand, no, but I believe it's turning around. Struggles and disappointments. There are times I I felt so alone. Some of my friends they they let me down, let me down, let me down. But I still believe it's turning around for me around for me around for me around for me it's turning around for me cause I can see the breaking I can see the breaking of day God is, God is making a way a change is a change coming, is coming. For me. If I stand strong, I stand and, strong just believe, and believe, there is no there's reason no to reason doubt. To Why? Doubt. Because God is, he's working it out, he's working it out, working it out. He's turning it's around, around, around for me. me. Now this is the good news. It won't all.
God and just begin to look up towards heaven and say thank you God for turning my situation around thank you God for turning my circumstance around Lord I've been down I've been out and I've been concerned about whether or not you were really going to come through and you said yes it's dark and you reminded me that weeping may endure for a night but you reminded me that joy cometh in the morning so we ask that you make this declaration with us as we sing it's turning around and we remind ourselves that it won't always be like this and it won't always be like this It won't always be like this. The Lord, he will perfect that concerning me. And sooner or later, it's going to turn in my Good morning, Mount Calvary. What a joy it is to serve a God who was able to turn things around. What a great, great song that was. We thank God for the blessings um, that are connected to that song, for the blessings of this day, and for the blessing of being connected by way of technology on this morning. It's good to be here on today. We thank God for all of those who work so diligently to bring this uh, broadcast together. And thank you all for your faithfulness and your commitment to make this happen every week. This morning, I want to invite you to start, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And if anybody here uh, this morning, under the sound of my voice, if you are going through something uh, today, this message is for you. Second uh, Corinthians chapter one. I'm going to be referencing verses eight through 11, but for the sake of time, I'm going to just read verse eight on this morning. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse eight. We think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure. And we thought we would never live through it. <laughs> we thought we would never live through it. I want to preach this morning from the subject how I made it through. <laughs> how I made it through. It's interesting in verse 8 of 2 Corinthians chapter 1 that Paul refers to the Corinthian church as brothers and sisters. He says basically, we are family. And what I love about that is that Paul does not disown other Christians because they have issues. <laughs> you do know the, the Corinthian church had their issues. When you read 1 Corinthians, you discover in chapter 1, they were divided. In chapter 3, they were carnal and fighting each other. In chapter 5, they were involved in sexual sin. In chapter 6, they were suing each other. In chapter 8, they were doing things to cause each other to stumble. In chapter 12, Paul had to explain to them that as 
Christians, we make up the body of Christ and every member is important and we need to work together. They didn't understand uh, the real issue of love. So in chapter 13, he talks about love. In chapter 14, he talks about order and how to use your spiritual gifts decently and in order. Chapter 15, he straightens out their misconceptions of the resurrection and talks about abounding in the work of the Lord. And in chapter 16, he talks to them about giving having the right perspective. They had issues. But Paul says, we're still family. <laughs> you're still my brothers. And you're still my sisters. It's interesting to note in verse 8, he says to his family, he says, I want you to understand some things. I want you to know some things. He says, there are a few of us who have been through, who have had trouble in our lives. He said, and not only do I want you to know about the trouble that we have had, but I want you to know we actually made it through. <laughs> it's interesting that he, he, he's making it clear as, as we read this, that, that trouble is real. And that trouble is no respecter of persons. And that trouble is something that we shouldn't get stuck in. But as children of God, we work our way through. We walk our way through. We fight our way through. And we trust God all the way through. Paul says, I want to tell you what I've been through. He says, my trouble my problems were full of pain. Paul says, my problems were painful. What were your problems, Paul? Paul says, well, first of all, we were crushed. The situation that we were in crushed us. He says, we were overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure. He says, the situation in verse 8, he says, it was so bad that we thought that we would never live through it. He says, we thought we were going to actually die. Have you ever been in a situation like that where it was so difficult? You did not feel like you were going to make it through. Maybe in this, this season that we are in right now, COVID-19, maybe there are some who feel like you're not going to make it through. Paul says we didn't feel like we were going to make it through. As a matter of fact, we had literally given up and signed our own death certificate. He says we felt defeated. We felt depressed and we had just given up and we were ready to die. Paul says the problem, it was painful. He says, but I want you to know that even though the problem was painful, now that I look back at it, I understand that the process was productive. Look at what he says in verse 9. He said, even though we expected to die, he says, what we, what we learned to do was we, we learned to stop relying only on ourselves. And we learned how to rely on God. Paul says through this process, he said, we learn some things that are very helpful. I know this morning that what somebody is going through, it's really painful. It's really uh, 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 causing deep problems and maybe even depression. But maybe God wants us to learn something as we go through the process. I remember when I was growing up, I wanted to make the basketball team. And so during the summer months, I would get up in the morning real early 
And I can remember my brother Art and my sister Debbie, they would see me get up in the morning early and go running. I'd run two or three miles in the morning. They used to say, Jeff has lost his mind. But I would run in the morning. And then in the afternoon, in the heat of the sun, I would go out and practice. And then in the evening, when the ball players would show up, I would always play with the older guys. And by playing with them, they would knock me down and they would score on me any time they wanted to. But throughout the, the summer, I noticed something. I got a little bit stronger. <laughs> I got a little bit wiser. I got a little bit better. And, and, and when school started back and it was time to try out for the team and I was participating and working and playing against young men my age, I was stronger, I was wiser, I was better. I made the team. The process that I went through in the summer worked. I had to work hard. I had to suffer, but it worked. It taught me some things, and there may be somebody going through this morning. You can be productive. The process can be productive for you. Paul says, I learned some things. He says, and what I learned, it liberated my mind. He says, I was depressed. We were ready and had given up. We felt defeated. He says, but my thinking was liberated when I understood that I could not do it on my own. And that I had to learn how to rely on God. And so Paul says, my problem was painful. He says, but my process was productive. Whatever you go, you're going through this morning, <clears throat> at some point you're going to be able to look back and look at all the things that you learned. And look at all the things that you accomplished. And you're going to see what you have gained. And you will say, yes, it was painful. But I was productive even in the midst of that painful situation. Not only that, when we read this story, we discover that Paul says, I was able to make it through. Because God's power was present. In the verse 9, he says, I learned how to re rely on God. And he says, God is the one who has enough power to raise the dead. In other words, Paul is saying, death cannot defeat the divine. <laughs> He's saying that God doesn't just have some power. He says that God has all power. And then Paul says, when I look back over my life and I realize when I was in trouble in the past, he said, God made a way for me. <laughs> he says, and even right now, if I'm facing a situation that is difficult, God will rescue me and make a way for me. He says, and I'm not worried about the future. This is what he says in verse 10. He says, because I have confidence that even when I run into trouble in the future, God will rescue me again. Somebody ought to look back over your life today. Didn't he bring you through in the past? Somebody ought to think about what you're going through right now. And with confidence, you ought to shout out right where you are. You ought to say, God will make a way out of no way. And I'm not worried about my future because God's power is present now and God's power will be present then. And so Paul said, I can make it because God's power is present. But then Paul says something that just blows me away. Paul says, we made it. Not just because God's power was present. He said, but we made it because there were people who were praying for us. 
Oh, my goodness. Paul says in verse 11, he says, and you are helping us by praying for us. Someone has said that in prayer, we place oppressive obstacles at the feet of the omnipresent and omnipotent God. <laughs> no matter what the obstacle is, it is not bigger than the omnipotent God. God has all power. Someone else suggested that when we pray, the invisible God does an incredible thing. And the songwriter said that an incredible God deserves incredible praise. Paul says people were praying for us. He says you were praying for us. In other words, you participated with us in our struggle. And you participated by saying, I may not be able to be there with you, but I'm going to pray with you. And I'm going to pray for you. Now, it's not unusual. It wasn't unusual for Paul to ask for other saints to pray for him and to pray with him. Write this down on your screen. Romans chapter 15, verses 30 through 33, where Paul tells the church at Rome, he says, join me in my struggle. Let me say it again. Join me in my struggle. How, Paul? Join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. <laughs> he says, if you do that, he says, I want you to pray in verse 31 of Romans 15. Pray that I might be rescued. And so he asked the church at Rome to pray for him. He asked the church at Ephesus to pray for him in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. He says, I want you to pray for me. He says, I want you to pray that God will give me the right words so that I can boldly explain this good news to the Jews and to the Gentiles. He asked the church at Colossae in Colossians 4, verses 3 and 4. He says, I want you to pray for us. Pray that God will give us the, the opportunity to, to speak more about who he really is. Even though I'm chained up. He says, I want you to pray that we will proclaim this message and that the message will be clear. If Paul asked the church at Rome to pray for him, if he asked the church at Ephesus to pray for him. If he asked the church at Colossae to pray for him, there's nothing wrong with you and there's nothing wrong with me asking someone to pray with us and to pray for us. Paul says, you prayed for us. Oh, I love that song that says somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They took a little time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. My mother prayed for me. <laughs> she had me on her mind. My grandmother prayed for me. She had me on her mind. My father prayed for me. She had, he had me on his mind. I'm so glad that somebody prayed for me. And Paul says, you were participating with us by praying for us. Now it's interesting in verse 11, he says, your prayers were productive because he says that God graciously answered them. <laughs> and he says, when you pray, he says, I love this. When you prayed, you prayed that we would remain safe. And I want you to know that because of your prayers and the power of God, we were able to persevere. 
But you know what else he says in verse 11? He says, in the midst of all of this praying, in all of this perseverance, he says, there is this gratitude of praise. He says, because many people gave thanks to God. Because God hears and answers prayer. And so every time a prayer was answered, somebody gave God some praise. I think we ought to take a moment right now and give God some, some praise for, for every prayer that he answered for every mountain he brought you over. For every valley he brought you through. Somebody this morning ought to give him praise right now. Can somebody type on your screen this morning? He's worthy. Let me give you these six final statements. The, these six key statements to this message this morning. And I need you to type them on your screen. Help me this morning. Type them on your screen. Please type them on your screen. Here we go. Number one, key statement number one. Every problem that I have is not meant to be carried alone. Mm. God doesn't want you to carry everything all by yourself. Songwriter said, if you trust and never doubt. He will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Don't carry that problem alone. Statement number two. God can consistently conquer all of my challenges. <laughs> I got to say that again. God can consistently conquer all of my challenges. There's no challenge that's too big for God to handle. Statement number three. We intercede so that God can intervene. The scripture teaches us that we should pray for each other. And haven't you noticed that when you pray for someone else, or someone else prays for you, it seems like God intervenes in their situations and makes a way out of no way. And so we intercede so that God can intervene. Statement number four, no matter where I am, God can reach and rescue me. Wherever I am, he can reach me. I'm not beyond God's reach. And wherever I am, God can rescue me. And when I look back over my life, he's rescued me over and over and over and over again. No matter where I am, God can reach and rescue me. Statement number five. My deliverance puts God's power on display. <laughs> when I get in trouble, it gives God the opportunity to display his power in my life. And every time he's made a way, I've been able to point folks to the fact that it was nobody but Jesus. It was his power put on display. And the last key statement, it summarizes what the text is all about. This is how I made it through. God's power and our prayers make a difference. Let's pray together. Thank you for your word. And Father, thank you for your power. And thank you for everybody who has prayed for me. God, we pray that we will all continue to involve ourselves in the ministry of intercessory prayer. And that no matter how big the obstacle is, how difficult the problem may be, 
we can make it through because of your power and because of the prayers of the saints. Thank you for all that you've done. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Pastor Dennis, for another great message this week. You know, the one thing that I've really been loving Pastor Dennis has been doing um, since we've been online is giving those key statements at the end of every message. It's really um, been helping me as I continue to study and grow and pray and just talk to God and have those conversations. Those statements just seem to keep coming back into two that really caught me this week was every problem that I have is not meant to be carried alone and my deliverance puts God's power on display and that's why right now I want to I want to extend an invitation to anybody who doesn't know God and wants to get to know the most amazing loving father you will ever have in your life you could have the greatest dad sitting right next to you on your couch right now and he's still not as good as our heavenly father that's how great God is. We are all going through circumstances right now. Life is happening. The coronavirus is happening. We all have situations that we need to be delivered through. And I really like in Acts 17 verse 27, where it says, this was so that they would seek God, if perhaps they may grasp for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. God's right here. He's waiting for each one of us to say, God, grab my hand. Let's go through this together. I want to praise your name in all that I do every single day. So if that's how you're feeling today, you want to join this church, you want a deeper relationship with Christ, or you just need somebody to pray with you and pray for you because we intercede so that God can intervene. See, that's another one of those statements. But if you need any of that, you just want to reach out, or maybe you just need somebody to talk to send us a message right here on Facebook Messenger. We will have one of our ministers contact you as soon as possible so that way you can get the prayer, the tools, the talk that you need to help get you to that next stage. Again, these are the ways that you can give your tithes, offering, um, or gift to the church. You can do it by mail, on our website, you can text to give, or you can give via Cash App. Again, thank you so much for joining us for another week, Mount Calvary. That's all we have this week. Stay safe, stay blessed, and have an amazing week and be a blessing to somebody else. to be
Your ego.